Hello, and welcome to the Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Foo. A little bit. Uh, I just love, I don't know why, and maybe this is just because this is what you did back in the day, you know, flip channels. Yeah. But I just turn on the TV and I just start flipping channels like, nope, I don't want, nope, that's not interesting. I don't want to see that. I don't care about this. Oh, what's this for a second? Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, commercial. All right, go. Yeah. Next one. Next. No. Next. Yeah. Oh, oh, what's this? No, no, no. Keep going. And I fucking love it. And it drives my wife crazy. Yeah. Drives her nuts. She just, you just are flipping. Why did you just use the guide? I'm like, I, cause this is how, this is what I want to do. Yeah. You weren't in here when I fucking turned on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This session, this viewing party was a party of one. Yeah. You know what I mean? You showed up after. Yeah. Don't come in and tell me how to watch TV. Yeah. Is rem- I turned on specifically to do this shit. Yeah. This is my purpose. Tap the tap tap. Um, I remember doing that with, you know, a, a TV that you had to like. Oh, yeah. Where the rug was worn out between the couch and the TV and you had to flip it. And then you had to put it on the UHF and then like, isn't that weird how on the UH or the VHF, you had UHF and VHF, right? Which was the the higher band. Oh, God. I think VHF three was the was that the three the primary numbers? Yeah, and then the UHF was the bigger and what yeah, numbers? Thirty one forty. But what's weird is the the tuning on the the lower bands was clunkety clunk clunk. Yeah. But the tuner on the other bands was like, zzz, and then you could fine tune it just yeah get it just right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. It wasn't like a clickety clickety. And I always thought that was weird, but that's how it worked. Did you ever blow out your knobs and <laughs> end up with vice grips on your? <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about Shan <laughs> or yourself. <laughs> the question just struck me funny. Like, right. I mean, I wonder no, why. No, we never. I don't. Th- we actually had happened. that. Like the, you, you know, you turn the channel so much, and the the the, the, the plastic the plastic were off, and we had vice grips. On on the main knob to to turn. I feel like you could have like just gotten your hands on like a oven knob and just stuck it on there or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably. But it was just like go get the vice grips. <laughs> go get the vice grips. The what? Do you put them so that they're sticking straight out, or do you put them so that they're parallel with the screen? You had to put it so it was coming straight out because if you if you put them flush, then it would, would run into the, the bottom knob. Oh, I see. Yeah, the, yeah. Or cover the part of the screen. Or right. Yeah. 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 So you that you know. You know that's it's funny because we're fucking old guys, especially me. Yeah. I'm an old motherfucker now. I'm not far behind, but yes. But <laughs> looking back at television through the years, specifically the technology. <clears throat> yeah. And then you look at like, like a 27 inch TV back in the day. That was ginormous television you yes. know what i mean yeah yeah they were huge bulky heavy and hot yeah they ran hot but those i mean that was the sought after size in there i don't think there was much big bigger tvs than that for a long time yeah i don't think so it wasn't until i think really the the uh projection screens came out you know, the rear projections yeah. and stuff like that that the screens got real big yeah and then the the, the image LPs. quality yeah the image quality on those wasn't really that good, you know? Yeah. You were always but affected you could get, by you how much- you got the size, and that's yeah. what it was worth for. Yeah, and you were always affected by how much light was in the room or the viewing angle or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I remember I remember my wife's parents, <laughs> they got like an HD TV, but it wasn't a flat screen. It was a flat screen, but it was a CRT. It was a Sony CRT. Yeah, they had a- Yes. And it was a gorgeous looking screen because it was a CRT, but it was a huge, I remember mm. they bought it mm. and whoever they bought it from had it delivered to the house. They they were delivering it to the house and the guys were bringing it in and the thing was so heavy, they dropped it and broke it. Oh shit. And had to have another one. And it was an expensive piece of kit for yeah. the house. 
and they had a specific cabinet that they bought that Just fit the, this television because it was so big and bulky and it was so heavy. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I remember for a time there were a couple manufacturers that were trying to perfect a way to square up a CRT. Yeah. S- yeah. Yeah. As opposed to being as more of a bubble round. Yeah, well, this was like right before like the LCD technology and the plasmas started coming out. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. This was the HD screen before you had the flat panel HD screens. Mm-hmm. But it was a nice flat, like widescreen version of a CRT. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool TV. It had a beautiful picture on it. And we've got a... Okay, well, hey... Hey, we're just jumping right in because I I, I I got all places to go from here. So hey, yeah. welcome to the show, Sad Dad's Club Podcast. Yep, episode one fifty six. I believe that's the number. I'm the Lord Fu. I'm Jim. Okay, let's keep. We're going. talking about TV. We're talking about TV. For so now. we, and I feel it. It did jump. I was just having this conversation about. Uh, I think it was with Mike and Angie. Yeah. About. Um, when I was still working for the bank, we had created this, uh, like an operations center on one floor that was part of, uh, like the Y two K monitoring right triage room. For those not in the know, there was a whole problem. Yeah, get your canned goods ready before the year two thousand came around because the, the banks won't make it. The bugs are out there. Yeah. No one plan. No yeah. one's gonna roll over to the year two thousand yeah. properly, and the, the world's gonna end. The whole thing. Yeah. It's all gonna come crashing down. So, uh, so we uh, part of my job and how I got into. The the bank was being a contractor to prep for Y two K. Oh, I thought you just awareness. walked in the front door. And so, right. And some of the one of the things we had to build this operations center. And at the time, the hot thing for my group was we dealt with pretty much all Sun Microsystems equipment. And Sun Microsystems had these huge twenty one inch CRT monitors. Yeah. And the traders on the trading floor had them as well as a, a Sun Microsystems desktop. And our operations center, while they had servers behind the scenes, all had multiple heads with these Sun Microsystems monitors. And we had what was like a 12 by f- three or four row, so 12 columns, three or four high, of just 21 inch CRT monitors, like in, behind. Like cabinets. Yeah. And this thing generated so much heat. It was oh, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But that, that was the thing. And I think that lasted. I mean, those were the hot thing at the time. They were hot, super high res. Uh, and they had Sun Microsystems labels on them. So they were a premium, I'm sure, right. being caught. But it was throw cash at it for these. And at the time... Uh, you know, I don't know too many people that were creating CRT monitors that big in that type of quantity, and the bank just gobbled them up. But this thing, this wall of monitors generated a grotesque amount of heat. Because CRTs. Yeah, and so we had uh, HVAC ducts <laughs> plumbed just for this bank of monitors. It was it was stupid. Yeah. Uh I, I felt like, and that was, you know, 99, 2000, maybe the 2002 was like the last gasp of the CRTs yeah. for the bank. And then everything quickly switched over to to panels, right. where, where it might have been plasmas for a bit, but uh, LCDs became the, the norm. Yeah. And what I've noticed in the last, specifically, we had a 42-inch... Uh, flat panel in the bedroom as like our like bedroom TV, and what I've seen start to happen now is you now they've almost like removed a segment of TV sizes. You're either forty two and under, yeah, or fifty something and above. So when I went to replace the one that that went south in the bedroom. I ended up going down because I don't need a 50 fucking inch TV in your bedroom. In my bedroom. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, one, that's not the, my wall mount wouldn't take it. Wouldn't take that. <laughs> Two, 
Jesus Christ, a 50-inch TV in my bedroom? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice, but no, I don't need that. So we ended up downsizing. The picture's better. It's a Samsung UHD fucking 4K. The price point was relatively the same yeah. as the 42, so I'm not sure how much money I saved given it's been probably two or three years that we've had it. But I ended up having to go down because the, the choice options of that 40-inch area seemed to just be, it's like a, like a barren desert. You're either smaller or bigger. <clears throat> it's very weird to me, like, what happened there. Right, right before the pandemic, we bought a UHD LG, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and it was replacing a Sony Bravia 40-inch LCD panel Okay, that was only 720p. Uh, that was a great TV. I really liked the way it worked. It had a, it had a nice picture for the, mm-hmm. for the age of it, for sure. Uh, but we had a, ran into a couple problems with stuff hooking up to it, like from HDMI connection, connecting properly and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was funny because we, this was a 40 inch Sony Bravia and the, the, the bezel on it was ginormous. So mm-hmm. I, I forget, we almost got like a 50 inch TV that had like a quarter inch bezel that essentially fit in the same exact same, place same, yeah. because the bezel on the old screen was so big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, that stuff's kind of nutty just to go and see. Uh, I went to uh, R.C. Willie. I have a friend that works there, and I was in the electronics section talking to him. And um, just looking around at the new TVs, and some of them don't even have bezels anymore. They're, they're almost yeah, they're like right up to, right the, up edge. to the edge. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And even the new TV we have has like quarter inch at a minimum. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's so nuts. I work in the video industry. It's just crazy to me to see how quickly the television stuff evolved, mm-hmm. you know? I remember uh went to a trade show in Tokyo. I think it was a Mac World in Tokyo, probably probably in the late 90s. <clears throat> and that was around the time when HD started to become a thing. Mm-hmm. And Japan was really, really embracing it, I think, before the U.S. did. But I think it was Panasonic had a booth there. And walking around the show, checking out stuff, and walking into the Panasonic booth and seeing... The HD s- stuff that they had, and some of the video that they had shot was, uh, uh, I forget the the guy, but it was like ABC News mm-hmm. anchor sitting at the desk. Mm-hmm. And it was the regular guy, whatever his name is, I can't remember off the top of my head. But you could see every strand of hair on oh, his head. Oh, yeah. And just like tripping out like wow that is incredible and how long is that going to be before people can actually afford to buy that right you know what i mean i remember yeah like a i mean this is not more than a couple of years ago when my dad i think was going to replace his tv the one it's like his where he only has one yeah uh and i said you want nothing that doesn't does anything less than 1080p like i don't care what and he's like what about these 4K ones? And I said, if it's in your price range, you can get it. That's yeah. absolutely fine. Go ahead. If it's in your price range. I mean, even like, if you don't have uh, 4K sources. Right. He's like, so what, what are the odds that this is going to get, this is not going to be uh, like the end? And I said, Dad, no one's going to go any higher than 4K in a normal TV. Blah, blah, blah. And I think it was probably six months later they were already talking about like 8k tvs and i went fucking are you serious like who (laughs) fuck now i gotta call my dad and be like dad remember when i told you they would never do anything higher resolution than 4k i fucked up i mean broadcast 8k is like what um you know what it takes for are they pushing that over the air Okay. Like with rabbit ears antennas, are they pushing I, 8K? I don't think so. Okay, see, that's, I mean, not that my dad, he has at t anyway, but. Well, I mean, for us to do, so the one of the products I work on is a, called a Key Pro Ultra, right? Mm-hmm. And that'll play back 4K. You can do 4K 60 playback. Okay. A record and playback. It takes us four of those units with other specialty hardware in order for us to play back an 8K video source to mm-hmm. something. 
So we have shown 8K video at a trade show, for instance. Mm-hmm. And it takes four of our units with specialty hardware to control the playback so that all the s- four segments mm-hmm. of the screen are exactly in time with each other. All right. Out to a screen that is specifically built to handle 8K. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, this is such a specialty thing. Like Being in, so with that knowledge at hand, yeah. would, you be, would you be confident in saying that most, most consumers who are digesting their entertainment or TV or multimedia through streaming services would never have a need for an 8K option? Is it at best we're seeing 4K streaming? Because let me let me ask you this. Let me let me answer that with a question. Are you ever watching your TV and going, God damn, this is just awful. This looks terrible. No. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like no. th- there's never a case where I'm watching a UHD or 4K stream from Disney Plus or whoever it is that's got uh you know, that's got sp- you know, special color yeah, yeah, yeah. set up for it that I go, fuck, I really wasted my money and I need yeah. more. Yeah. I definitely need more than this because in reality, whatever service that you're going to get that can give you 8K is going to require some crazy amount of data throughput that you probably don't have at your house anyway. Right. So it's. And my, and I have no problems with my picture and resolution yeah and i don't have even 4k yeah so it's like and i would probably be struggling if i actually had something if i had a 4k tv where i then said yeah give me the 4k uhd version i'd probably be locking out all the other people in the house from bandwidth as it oh yeah sucked that down yeah so i'm like i and like you perfect Perfect way to put it. Yeah. Like, I have never caught a high-definition streaming service and went, I would enjoy this more if I had a little bit better of a picture. Yeah. Even if you bought an 80-inch display, yeah, you're still going to be like, damn, that looks really good. That looks good. really nice. That looks yeah. super good. And, you know. And that's part of the reason I haven't been motivated. Not that my TV needs to be my main tv needs to be replaced it has a a handful of sparse pixels that are blown out oh that sucks but nothing to the point where i'm like well this is just unacceptable i need table flipping yeah this is bullshit right it's it's fine it's absolutely i'm letting it ride i mean the thing's gonna have to literally probably go out on me yeah before i'd be concerned that You know, uh, this is taking away from my viewing experience. I mean, that's what I felt bad about getting rid of our Sony Bravia. Yeah. Because it was, its only crime was that it was a 720p television, right? Yeah. It wasn't even 1080. So it was a little bit smaller of a resolution, but the thing worked perfectly. I couldn't find anyone to take it. You know what I Mm -hmm. mean? Mm -hmm. I had to like donate it to get rid of it. I couldn't get rid of the fucking thing. Mm Mm-hmm. So I always felt, I kind of feel bad about that. And especially knowing I spent like $1,100 on it when it was new. When it was new. Yeah. yeah. And the new TV that was UHD whatever uh, was like $340 or something. I mean, it's stupid cheap. Yeah. Stupid cheap. Yeah. But, but it's just kind of crazy. Like when we, we talk about the quality of what we were watching back then on a 27 inch that was standard def. Mm -hmm. And at the time it was like, wow, this is great. And you watch video discs and shit on it or, right. And it was like, it was, this was incredible. It was fun to have people over to watch a movie. And back then you were, you were uh, bottlenecked by the medium that you were watching. And that's, that's why uh, the, the visual, experience got better when blu-ray and and yeah whoops sorry you missed the boat hd dvd came out because they were encoding a 1080p yeah or or a higher resolution that you got you got higher output on your whatever medium that you were watching yeah and that was the like whoa fuck, this blows you away kind of thing yeah well then they hit the limit and then it was like well everything's pushing in 1080p or 720p and you're okay now all of a sudden 
Well, would you like to see it in 4K? Would you like to see it in UHD? Oh, here we go. It kind of it did a little bit surprise me, and maybe this is something that would work for 8K. I don't know. But I remember thinking, like, no one's going to have 8K video to play back. You don't have, as far as I know, there aren't any 8K disc players or whatever. Like, yeah, where you can't get physical media that's media. playing or encoded with 8K. Yeah, you're not going to get that. That doesn't exist. So where are you going to get an 8K source now at all, ever? And I remember thinking the same thing about 4K back when 4K was like a big mm, deal. Yeah. It was like, well, where are you going to get a 4K source? Well, now you can stream that shit. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Right. And yeah. who knows? Maybe 8K is coming down the pipe. I mean, everyone's internet's getting faster incrementally. Maybe not yours. Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, shots Maybe fired. Wow. <laughs> you didn't even miss a beat, dickhead. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> no fiber for you. Oh, fuck. Oh, here, wait. Wow. I do have something to tell you. Okay. Because, first of all, I do have fiber at my house. It's fucking awesome. Uh -huh. And I've had it since the neighbor who was new 25 years ago, which is kind of funny to think about <clears throat> that. But. Salty. <laughs> you want to be even more salty? Okay, go. The Xfinity guy came by and said, we have fiber in your neighborhood now. <laughs> <laughs> so I have fiber from two providers in my neighborhood now, and they're offering more than gigabit. Just so you know. Wow. <laughs> God damn. But, I mean, everyone's internet is getting God. faster over time. Shit. And, uh, except yours. Yeah. And so, you know, you're going to have, I assume at some point, <laughs> there are going to be services that will offer that. I mean, yeah. can you even buy an 8K TV for a consumer? I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. I have yeah, no idea. I haven't looked. But, you know, I mean, I'm not honestly trying to dig on you. It's just a joke we have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's kind of nutty to see that the march, the progression march to mm -hmm. where we're at now and knowing there's some of the stuff coming up. It's kind of mind-blowing. I will say that something I did notice as someone that spends a lot of time just slightly transitioning to more computer monitors, uh, you know, I spend my time in front of a monitor all time, yeah, a, a lot of time, and then I game on the Xbox. And about four or five months ago, I had a, a monitor die, and I opted to get something of the same size. I think it was twenty four inches, but the refresh rate was was high. I think I went from a sixty hertz to one hundred twenty hertz. Oh, okay. And that was something that I as as a gamer. That was something that I noticed right away that was easier on my eyes. Oh. Like right off the bat, everything seemed smoother, uh, less jarring, like the animations and the transition as you moved your joysticks around and played uh, certainly FPS types of games. Uh, it was just like a softer picture that felt easier on my eyes. Huh. And I was just talking with Brett, uh, hashtag hi Brett, you'll never listen, so hashtag hi Kim. Uh, he has just replaced his TV because uh -huh. they're getting ready to move. I think they have their walk-in for their house. So if you've been paying attention, there's my brother and sister-in-law whose house they lost to a fire January 1. They have their walk-through next week. So oh. he repurchased his TV, and he was looking like, well, I didn't. He had just bought the one that he had had, I think, near Thanksgiving. Oh, damn. A really nice Samsung. He's like, obviously, there's a new new one out. And I said, here's the thing. I said, you could buy the biggest and best uh, or buy what you had. But as someone who's now seeing some of the benefits of just like a, a small feature, like you get the high resolution, that's fine. But I said, if you have an, a choice to opt to make sure that your, your thing can do 120 or 144 hertz, get that one. Because I guarantee you, if you guys start gaming on it, which they didn't really have a chance to before they lost it in the fire, I said, it is so much better on your eyes, especially mm. if you're going to do some sort of PC hookup setup to it along with a gaming console. You'll get a ton of more utility. It'll be easier on your eyes. Look at those types of things as you purchase your next TV or monitor. And he's like, oh, okay. I don't know what he got, but 
Anyway, something to think about if you're looking at monitors. He high got refresh a, rates. He, he got an old Emerson 27 inch. Yeah. You, know? you want a Sun Microsystems monitor? Yeah. CRT tube, baby. Now, speaking of old CRT computer monitors, uh, when I first started working in high tech, my very first trade show was Macworld San Francisco in 1996. My The company that I worked for had a booth. Uh, it was their first. As far as I know, their first Macworld booth they ever had, and it was just a little little booth, and the entire booth was built around this ginormous CRT monitor okay. that they bought specifically to put in the booth. So it was like the booth was like real. The key real feature long, was the this monitor, monitor that we could do demos on. Okay, but it was huge, and it was mounted to a like a thing on wheels so it could be like kind of rolled in and out of its spot. Okay. But the thing was ginormous. And I remember it needed a, like at the time in the 96, it needed a high end raster ops card that ran on the Mac in order to run the thing. Okay. You couldn't just plug it into a normal graphics card. Okay. It wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. You had to have this really expensive raster ops card in order to even get it working. Hmm. And it's like funny because I remember they had uh, the degausser. No, oh, remember those? Yes. And it was basically a thing that you plugged in, and it had magnets in it, and you had a button that turned it on. Yeah. And I remember they would like take it, and zzz, and you could see it affecting the screen while mm-hmm. it was running, and they would degauss it all the time, and it had to be degaussed fucking all the time. Like I didn't, I, I'm like I don't, and then sometimes you would see the scan lines at the bottom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you'd see like, like a, a few of them like sort of trail off. I'm like. Like, what are we like, doing? Looking back on it, it was cool to have that big display. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone else at the show had a s- display like that. Yeah. But it also, like, what a piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you guys just have a really big, shiny piece of shit. Really? Really. Yeah. I, like, it wasn't usable in any respect whatsoever because it was so, so fucking big and heavy mm-hmm. that we had to mount it to a wood... <laughs> You know, Good a piece Lord. of the booth, mount it to that motherfucker with wheels so it could be moved. Huh. Yeah, it was, uh, and then I don't even know how they got it up there. I mean, it must have took multiple guys to lift it up there and get it mounted. Forklift? Prop, maybe. Very possible. Oh, it was elevated? Yeah, it was up on like a pedestal. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like, like it was the center of our booth. We had like demo stations down either side of it, and it was the, like, Tony would do demos on that. Yeah. Like, talk to the talk to people yeah it was crazy but god looking back on it yeah what a pile of shit like it had to be degaussed all the time and it always had like weird like rainbowy colors in the corners and shit and then you see like the scan lines trailing off at the bottom and they just like get a little bit further apart go and then it was you know what i mean huh. i was like what this isn't a good way to sell our shit yeah huh yeah anyway uh, it's just memory lane a little bit right there yeah, yeah. So. what'd you do this weekend I didn't do much, but you know, <clears throat> my daughter is into prison. Yeah, big uh, time. Yeah. Prison guys, really. Yeah, cellmates. Yeah, she's been trying to get hooked up with someone. Yeah, she's like, I'm a good soap dropper. Yeah, and I'm like, what did he do? What's yeah. he in for? Yeah. And she's like, 35 to life. Uh, and I'm like, you should go for it. Tainted popsicles. Yeah. But uh, no, she's in, she's, uh, she works for a crystal shop here in town. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so she's like, big time into crystals. She's into, hunting or searching she's always ever since she's been little she loves collecting rocks and fucking rock hound yeah rocks and um like if we go to the beach you know she wants to find all the silver dollar or the oh okay you know all that kind of stuff i have we literally have boxes of them at, at home she's a treasure hunter at oh, heart big time okay so part of this is uh some of the stuff they get at the crystal shop it's all fairly expensive stuff some of the uh the geodes that are mm-hmm. they like cut open and oh, yeah, like yeah. crystals inside yeah. those are beautiful oh, I, I love those I, yeah those are really neat but they're hundreds of dollars they're really expensive so she's like interested in search so she has okay. a <laughs> gems of california book oh that she has multiple pages marked of yeah we can go well, this is nearby oh okay so she found a place that was up near my office okay off of uh you bet road. You bet road. Yeah. 
And I'm like, well, I have to go to the office. I got to pick up some stuff so we can make a day out of it. We'll go do this thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then when we're done, we'll go to the office and pick up uh, the stuff I need to get. Okay. So we head up there and it's like, it's got directions in the book on how to find these places. Okay. But in the case of this particular location, it wasn't super clear. All right. And so we drive up, you bet, and take a take a turn on the Red Dog Road. Okay. And then you follow Red Dog Road, and then all of a sudden you come to like a Y, and Red Dog Road goes to the left, and this other road that we're supposed to take, I don't remember what the name of it is, Cloud something, or I don't even know. <laughs> Banjo but, uh, Fiddler's Anonymous. But even prior to that, even prior to getting to that corner, the road just turns it from pave to to dirt dirt and so oh boy here we go yeah not in my car we took the uh oh that's crv okay okay good well fuck yeah yeah we took the crv but uh, it's like i don't know just i was worried about puncturing a tire or something but anyway so we uh take this dirt road and then we take this little y red dog goes to the left whatever the name of this road is we, we go right we're supposed to go down about a half a mile and of course i don't set the you're not tacking it you're just, I didn't, yeah, I, I figure I'll know. Well, like, it, it kind of tells you sort of what we're looking for. Okay. And, like, you know, we're going to get, like, like, a tenth of the mile down the road, and we're not going very fast, and all of a sudden it's, like, private road, and this oh. road's um, yeah. patrolled by yeah. the whatever something somethings. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck? And then we drive down a little bit further, and there's, like, this really cool cliffy thing with trees on it that's been dug around and it's like okay that's kind of neat mm-hmm. and it's it tells you essentially the book says go to a jeep trail that's been blocked off okay this is what it says here we go but what's nutty about this is everywhere on both sides of the road is Private property, keep out, dog, watch for dogs. Oh, yeah. And then one of the places was like, there's a- I will physically shoot you. Yeah. One of the places had like a little, uh, you know, their driveway, and there was like a fence with like uh, like metal, uh, like roofing as the oh, fence. Like a hunter's and, perch? And, and, <laughs> no, just like along oh. the road, there's like this metal fencing, and it's like, what the fuck? So we drive past that, and we go down a little farther. It's like, no, this, I mean, that could be it. I don't know. you uh-huh. know. But then there's, like, the no trespassing signs. And, like, right. when you're seeing no trespassing signs, that tells me somebody there will fucking shoot you if they catch you on their property. Especially in Podunk, Nevada County. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well... I see what's happening here. I'm just going to keep going because that's probably not the place that the people in this book right. probably went. Right. Probably. Probably. And so we keep going, and then finally we like get kind of far, and Millie goes, I don't know, I think we missed it. And I'm just like, you were on the same road we were on, and none of us saw a place where it was it would have like been a turnout advantageous. Or de- right. There were some turnouts, but there wasn't any. The, the other part of this is that, we're on this sort of road, and it's a ridge. So on one side, it's a drop-off, and on the other side, it's a drop-off. So oh. if it wasn't private property, stay the fuck out, it was a drop-off of like 20 or 30 feet on each side. Oh, wow. Okay. So I was like, I'm, I'm not going to like park here and hike down this fucking cliffside right. Right. to get down here to look for rocks. Like, that's not going to happen. So right. I say, okay, fine. Here's what we're going to do. Let's turn around. We'll go back to the beginning where this road splits off, and it says let's go a half mile. So now we're going to clock it. Okay. So we get there. I turn around. We get to the half mile mark, and it's exactly where I thought it might be, but it's got fucking private property, no trespassing. Stop taking my rocks, fuckers. Maybe. I I mean, yeah. And I'm like, (sighs) (laughs) you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so we end up parking in a place it didn't really have we just sort of looked around let the dog take a leak yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah and it was like well this was a bust you know like i don't know what we're supposed i'm i don't know what i'm supposed to do i'm not willing to yeah risk anyone's safety over rocks over some rocks when i don't know what the case is on any of these pieces of property yeah 
So the place that had the metal fence, yeah. as we were coming back from the other side, it turns out to be a pretty good sized grow operation of some kind. Oh. Because there, as you're yeah. coming from the other direction, you can see around the fence and there are greenhouses. Oh, why? there you go. And I'm like, well, that's why they have the fucking fence. Oh, yeah. They don't want, you couldn't see it from the one way, mm. only if you were coming back the uh-huh. other way. Uh-huh. And like, so, you know, considering yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff is happening around. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to do is have someone fucking shoot me. Oh, because, we're just here for the rocks. Fuck yeah. I bet you are. Uh-huh. You're here for my pot. And it wasn't that the road was devoid of any traffic. There were several cars that drove by at some points. And I don't know if huh. those were people <laughs> patrolling yeah, or, hey, Larry, uh, yeah, we got a blue CRV driving <laughs> down the road. Can you go check that out? You know, I don't have any idea what yeah, yeah. the fuck was happening. Uh-huh. And we parked for a little while, got out. It was a goddamn cliff. We didn't go very far. And then we got back. No in the rocks car. were found. No rocks really were found. So, but, but I just thought that is the weirdest. Like we are, the the book was just fucking wrong. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned. So was it a published book? Yeah, yeah. How, how bizarre. Gems of uh, California or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, I was. I thought it was something more like she was cobbling together like a diary based off of information. No, but it, it was a published a book. published book. Because I, I even right. said, like, when was the book published? Because if it was published, like, in the 90s, maybe some of these pieces of It'd property were been, bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. and I don't, you know, she never found a published date, which maybe she just didn't care enough to look. I don't know. Yeah. Because I was driving and she was in the back. It's not like geocaching. and That's almost like something you would need nowadays. But if the information's out of date, it's out of date either yeah. way. Yeah, and it's like, okay, well, we tried. You know, like, that's fine. And yeah. then we went to my office, picked up some shit. And then, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know this area well. Uh, I don't know where she's getting some of the, this particular information, but she says, well, there's supposed to be a place down along the Wolf Creek. Okay. Uh, which is off Wolf Road. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Wolf Road is opposite of Comby Road. I know exactly where Wolf Road is. So we were coming back that way. I said, we're already here. Yeah. We'll just hang a right down Wolf Road and check it out. So you drive down Wolf Road, you end up going over the creek. Okay. And I'm like, well, it's no reason to go any further. The creek goes to the right here. It literally goes under the road up to the right. Right. So I do a U-turn. There's nowhere... To get out, everything's fenced out. Yes. It's all private property. And that was another one of these things where it was like, oh, yeah, you can find stuff along Wolf Creek. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, I'm not fucking going in anybody's private property. Are we talking about just the intersection right there at Combi? So are you going? Yeah. So to- we were coming down 49 from Grass Valley. You made a right hand. Hanging right on Wolf. That bridge, that first bridge. You're talking about the creek right there? No, we went down past, uh, uh, before you would, uh, no, just after you would turn right to go up to, uh, uh, um, Montessori school, Dugans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you go over, like within two minutes of coming that intersection, you cross a, a creek, river, and bridge. You've gone, you've made that right, awkward right-hand turn up, or you stopped right at the, the first bridge you that crossed. That first bridge. That first bridge? Yeah. I believe. Not, wait, uh, I don't know. I have to look at the map okay. to, to like, you know. Because a lot of those you, places, a lot yeah. of those places used to be open. Certainly, right. like, when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, you know, we... I think it's just a, like a modern thing. Like people, plenty of people used to stop and fish in the creek, in, right there. Yeah. And even even with fencing and whatnot, it was a, a I'm going to say like a a country agreement. Right. It was like, if you're not littering and leaving your shit and leaving a mess. Yeah. The people who were probably country bumpkins themselves didn't mind people fishing in the creek, and yeah. if you caught something, you know. Yeah, most people respected it. I think we're in a place in time now where the country country agreement probably has gone 
the wayside because at some point someone probably going down there to fish or look for rocks cut themselves getting through the barbed wire fence or twisted an ankle broke an ankle on the creek bed in the river rock and then <clears throat> excuse me and then tried to sue somebody right and now and now it's a it's no longer a thing it's like yeah you at some point it probably was but now there's no way because lawsuits and protections and garbage. Well, I mean, I assume the creek itself is state owned. I don't know if people own know. the creek, if if people own the property up to the edge of the creek or if they own into the middle of the creek and the pro- property owners like share that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. All I know is like the access point to where the creek where the bridge was and the creek right. is uh there was a lot of fencing and a lot of signage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not willing, you know, again, oh, yeah. it's no. the same thing as where we were up on the hillside. Right. I'm not willing to like, fuck these people. Especially you know what I mean? if you're not semi-local, yeah. like where you would, uh, I'd be interested. I don't know what kind of rock she was looking for. Obviously, I mean, my She's dad's house. She looking for geodes and uh, you know, you that probably kind of wouldn't stuff. find it my dad's. Yeah. But my dad's has the same creek, just it's a little bit closer to a smaller tributary than yeah than it is probably some of those bridges and yeah. there's no you can drive right up and and you get tons of wash there because everything gets polished as it tumbles right before a whole bunch you get a couple good rains and you, plenty of parking yeah. and it's obviously it's private but there's no you could park and there's no fences to it you could wade in the creek and pick at rocks and shit well that was the other part of it it was uh the creek was there and you know like it's not like there were banks you could just walk on. It was very overgrown. Stuff's growing up over the creek. It's not like it would have had easy access to just milling around and checking stuff out. Hmm. That coupled with the fencing and the signage, kind of, you know, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, and if well, you like went to that place over by my dad's and yeah. you needed to use the potty, you could just go up to your coworker's <laughs> house and be like, "Hey, we're picking rocks out of your come here." Right. Mm-hmm. By the way, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I peed on a tree. Yeah, again, fucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, so it was kind of a bust, but you know, we did, we went and did something. We we tried, you mingled. I, but no one wants to cross bar bar fences in this day and age, just for no, no, no. I, I no, we don't. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, we used to do all kinds of dumb shit. And we didn't care. We would go and uh, cross through fences, and oh yeah. We, but oh, as an those adult, those days are gone. When you have responsibilities, and yeah, people are very sue happy and litigious. You we, know, it's like yeah. it's not worth it. No. I, I don't want to get shot, and I don't want to be sued by somebody. Yeah. So no. Yeah. Like the, I we segue that. So over the weekend, I had, uh, I had a really long, long early day. Of work Saturday. Yeah. Saturdays is my big run day. Yeah. I had an eight mile run. You had the runs? Yeah. Oh. N- well, no. <laughs> but it was it was super long. And I was I was gassed. There was no way I was gonna at the end of the day after a full, you know, starts at four forty five and I went all the way to like six. Yeah. I was I was tired. You, got, my, you sent me a message like it's not happening today. Yeah. It was just not. My legs were shot, and like to then try and put on mileage after after sitting the amount of time I had to sit in the chair, even getting up and down and resting my legs, it's like there's no way. Yeah. Uh, so I I sent you a thing. I'm like I I'm tired. I I can't. I'm not gonna put you. Don't expect my eight mile like status update today. Yeah. And I said I'll I'll roll it over tomorrow. You know my. I don't want to miss Which a day. Which I'm, I'm very upset about. I know. I know. You were I, like, I wrote hey. in my diary all kinds of nasty shit about you. He told me he was weak and he couldn't do it. And so <laughs> I shamed myself with a belt in the closet. <laughs> so see, I told Venus the same. Well, I'm gassed. I will, I'll have to put this. I'll put it in. Put in the miles tomorrow. So you I'll, better do double the next day. Right, That's all I'll I'm do saying. It, I'll do it Sunday. And... I I felt really good Sunday, but I had kind of slept in because I was tired, so tired Saturday, and I figured, well, I'll run in the morning. Well, what's sleeping in? Can we establish that? I went past a eight. Oh, damn, dude. Yeah. That is, are you okay? I know. 
So, Did you go get a COVID test? And then I was like milling around a bit, and I'm like, well, it, I, I'm looking at the temperature, and I'm like, as long as it's not super hot, yeah, uh, I'll start. And then I think it got somewhere about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I was still kind of being lazy about it. And then I saw that the temperature had reached about 80, and I went, I have to go. I have to run because I, I can't. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to. It's going to get too hot. Yeah. And I was... <laughs> I was feeling good, but I wasn't taking into account how fast the temperature was increasing, oh. and that it was uh, it was going to be a, like a hot day. There was no clouds; it was straight up sunny, nice weather. But I took off here about eighty one degrees, full sun, about ten o'clock, and you know, four miles in. Realize and with there was like a, a small amount of wind, so on my way out, I was kind of facing headwinds. Oh, so you're getting the cooling effect, yeah. So I was, and I left the house in a bit of a huff because I'm like, oh, so I didn't take any water with me. I had just shot myself in the foot a number of times, so I got four miles out and I went, uh, I would rather turn around like I do an out and back instead of my loop and then have some of the wind as a benefit to me blowing at my back and knowing like having my visuals of I know exactly where I'm at as far as distance left to go because I'm running right to the house. So I turned around and what I started running to was it got too hot Oh, and the side of the road that I was then on no longer had any shade. So I was eating direct sun, and it got way hot, and I no longer had my water, and the fact that the wind was at my back made zero difference. Yeah. And I had to just, I had to pull the plug a couple times, like, you know, stop my tracker, because I was just like, I, I'm, (laughs) I have too much to lose. I'm like, there's, I get, I gain nothing by continuing to run myself into the ground and fucking like heaven forbid have a heart attack or, or heat, heat stroke, stroke yeah. or something some sort of medical thing i like got i have a family to you know it's one of those adult things that has started to override no when to say when exactly I, I, and so it was like i'll stop my tracker and i got my mileage in but uh I think there's there's a point at which I've started to realize that the husband and father part has overtaken the m- macho s- self goal uh, part of me. And it was like I there's I can still accomplish the the task without r- sacrificing or putting at risk being able to be here. Well, you don't want your ego. Right. Crushing you. Right. And yeah. I wasn't too far That's off the time. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't too far off time. And I don't know where that, like, sad dad switch has flipped. <laughs> as but, soon as we started doing this show. Right. And, it, and, and, you know, and I got back to the house and we just like, how was your run? I'm like, you know, once I got in <laughs> to the garage, I'm like, I actually feel good. Yeah. But my my brain was like, you're... You will overdrive. Pu- you will you will do something wrong. Yeah. You have to you have to pull the plug. So I would t- I took multiple breaks. I would stop my tracker and then I as soon as I was ready to pick up again, you know, I I would hit it again. So I feel good about checking off that I had done the mileage. But if the when the kids get here, when the kids get to this episode at some point, just know that it's okay Put the, measuring the dicks or or measuring against yourself about the goal. Sometimes you just put. It's okay to put something else ahead of yourself to make sure that you you'll be there. Do you want to know what that reminds me of? Getting the shot? No. Oh, our spirited drive that we took. Yeah. Where I was like, okay. Yes, that is exactly it. I was like, no, I, I'm not going to fucking put myself in a ditch or kill myself yeah. or wreck my car or whatever. Yeah. The, the, this is, I've already gone further than I, I would, I'm comfortable with. Yeah. And that may have been too much. So I'm just going to back off a yeah. little bit. 
uh, and I've run into this too with yeah. with Mike. Uh, he has asked me to go on like a like a ride. You know, this is months and months back. I'm, you know, it might have been last year. Uh, hey, you, it Sunday. You want? Let's go for a ride really fast. Uh, and I think I had done the same kind of thing. Like it was like a six day week, and I said I, I can't. Like the way that I enjoy driving, and even though uh, I never try to overdrive my talent, you know, Mike and I, as like a driving synergy, we we would get close to the line. Yeah. And I said, even if I'm watching myself, I'm I'm so tired that I would I would probably make a mistake. And I said so. It wouldn't be safe for me or you riding with me or alongside me for me to participate in that. And, you know, it's just one of those adult things that kind of just. Uh... I wonder if part of that is like having it planned ahead of time. Where if it's an off the cuff thing and you're not yeah, quite. It could right, be. That... I, I probably would have made sure I made room for rest yeah. if I'd have known. Yeah. Uh, sure. You would have been more in, in it with your in your mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Sure, probably. <clears throat> but I mean, I could I could see that playing a t- taking a toll on you a little bit. Yeah. Whereas, like as a young guy, yeah, you know, I, I you're not even too too many years back. I would have just <laughs> I would have run through it. Yeah, let's go. But, you know, I'm gonna be tired, but uh, I'll make up for it. Like, I just saw my daughter's senior year pictures. I'm like. You know, I need yeah. to, I need to be here, and that means starting to pull back on some risks that I would take if I were not really concerned about making sure that I can participate later. You well, know? let me just say this: it's a serious thing that I, you know, uh, I I'm kind of glad you held back a little bit because uh, I was doing high school soccer tryouts summer before my freshman year and it was like 104 degrees outside and we were out on the field going um i was determined to make the team Mm -hmm. i ended up getting heat exhaustion at a minimum or very mild heat stroke Mm -hmm. um and it fucked me up like like my body ever since that has moment never in time been the same has never been able to regulate heat very well since huh um <clears throat> it's no it's no joke um yeah. i got pretty sick didn't end up finishing tryouts and didn't make the team mm-hmm. and never tried out again for yeah. high school sports mm. um and i soccer i lived for so it was a killer yeah but that's i mean that's the kind of shit now you hear about on tv when people fucking die or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just I just heard about a uh, situation where a girl, I forget what sport she was doing, maybe it was soccer, but she got heat stroke and died. Yeah, it's it's serious, man. Yeah, uh, like giving yourself the break. Yeah, uh, right. And we, I think, a couple shows back, we talked about how you know, bitch, when you're younger and you're bitching and moaning about practice, and you're like, yeah. like I think there's a line difference there, like. Uh, you will be pushed, and I think it's important to have goals and to push yourself when appropriate, like to, you know, for those of us who aren't gifted, <laughs> in order to make progress on, on whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you, you want to push yourself a little bit, but that comes with the awareness to know when it's dangerous and stupid versus, uh, you know, trying to, trying to make gains. Like yeah. you, you do need to go a hundred and X percent to to get yourself in a position if you're trying to make gains. But that that comes with the asterisk of, but don't be stupid about it to where it's going to cost you something. Yeah, down the road or cost you something that you love, you know. Well, now I feel like now it's like we know way more um, about how how it affects people, and like they'll kill practices off when it gets too hot and stuff like that. It's Mm -hmm. like back in the eighties, no one gave a shit. Right? You you fucking went hard in the middle of a fucking hundred and four day. Yeah. 
because you wanted to make the team and you didn't want to be the one guy who went weak. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I paid a price for that. Oh, and yeah. It, and yeah. It, it sucks. Uh, you know, it, there, and there's especially, I'm going to, I'll flat out say it, especially in male sports. Oh, yeah. Like m- me playing um, junior minor football uh, for up here in you. Yeah. The amount of, of, you know, you're wearing full pads. Yeah. In summer. And to be a helmet. Yeah. To be generally like dehydrated and, and, but the, the coach is like, yeah, yeah, we are going to do wind sprints or something and then we'll get a water break. And to get that much extra out of you, you know, in looking back, I was like, I, I'm not sure that's the best way to train. And then if you are genuinely tired and like gassing out, you're looked at as, as the weak link negative or, or, or weak, yeah. you know, sure. Perhaps from a, you know, the weakest link gets the, you know, gets the, the boot kind of thing. Sure. You know, you can identify who your all-stars are from that, but should it come at a, at a stigma to where someone who's generally probably dehydrated or suffering from heat exhaustion, j- just to prove a point, you know, and now we see these, you know, like uh, the high school itself, so the football game just recently with all the fires that we're having. It's like, no, we're, we're, we're postponing this game because it's just flat out unhealthy as fuck in oh, the air. Yeah, you don't want I mean, kids. You got the heat plus the yeah, smoke. I mean, you don't want it. To, I mean, you probably wind that kind of thing back up to when we were in high school and that's game on. Yeah. No one's. No, no one's you giving a no. Shit. Come on, softies. Yeah. In my day, we played that. Yeah. We played right through that. And, yeah. You know, it was my grandpa said he smoked two cigars while it was that smoky outside. He don't yeah. give a fuck. My grandpa drank whiskey for his water yeah. jug. Yeah, shit. You know? Are you kidding me? I, we all played half drunk anyway. <laughs> and we were high as fuck. Most of the time, we were on mushrooms, too. We were playing squids. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> okay. Well, shit. Yeah, okay. You should be on the team. <laughs> wow. <laughs> God damn, there's a reason I wasn't an all-star, because I kept seeing starfish everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm afraid of starfish. Were they brown? Yeah, the brown ones. God damn. <laughs> Breakfast jacks. I kept feeding them. It's bad guys. Hashtag high data is when you get here ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of scary, because I think about that quite often. Knowing yeah. Knowing, like, <laughs> you know... I can just go outside and mow the yard and get overheated. Um, yeah. And I'm just pushing a mower around. It's not like I'm running wind sprints or something. Yeah. Um, I think that's something, that's one of the few things that I still struggle with. Like, Venus and I, rent, uh, went during the Paradise fire, so that's, what, two years back years at this ago. point? Yeah. We were training for stuff, and... Uh, I'll be honest, we probably ran in days where we shouldn't have uh, because I was an idiot and we shouldn't have, Um, you know, and it was probably a lot of like, well, we'll be fine or carry over from when I was younger. And it was just like, I will be fine. Like, man, no, at this point, I'm like, yeah, I want to see 80, 90 years old because I. I would like to know what my retirement, you know, is like. I need to get to that line. Yeah. And and that means, come on, don't be a fucking idiot. No one's giving me extra credits for for balling up and running in 150 parts per million garbage air. For There's me, no gold you're stars. Gonna, you're going to get the shaky head and like, damn. Like, that was dumb. That was dumb. Damn, what are you doing? You know. Yeah. No, you know, I feel it. Just be smarter. It, you know, it's okay to walk it back a little bit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because if you're gone, then what? What did it get you? Nothing. You'll be missed. Absolutely but, nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's kind of scary. I mean, I, 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 uh, I mean, with that knowledge, like, I, as a coach, if I was a coach. Yeah. I, I would be super conscious of it. Just knowing how it affected me over my now lifetime. Cause I mean, shit, that was uh, 25 years ago mm-hmm. or whatever. However old that 20, 
35 years ago. <laughs> she might have been to carry the one. 35 years ago. Divide by zero. I mean, yeah, that's we're talking about a lifetime of like how it's affected me in in the heat in yeah. general. Um, and it's. Hmm. It was one of those things, too. And I, I think I made light Careful. of it, but I was real quick about it when we were when the one run that Nick joined me on and he had shoes where I think his pinky toe was poking through. <laughs> and and I made joke like he's invincible, man. You got to get new shoes. And he, you know, made a comment. It was like, oh, I'm good. And, you know, and then I kind of I but came these back. Are my lucky shoes. I came back one time and I'm like, but seriously, <laughs> I really would like it if you got actual proper shoes i mean you're because the, i you know i care about you know, you're you know. the shoe nazi let's be honest i dude <laughs> we will have tony here and i guarantee you tony will be like yeah shoe nuts now shoe nazi. now tony had a shoe sponsor so yeah <laughs> you know well fucking fuck that guy then because i'm sure he had all the treads he needed <laughs> yeah but I, now i you know if you're going to your feet Man, I know shoe Nazi. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. I will wear. Well, I would prefer not the Nazi part, but <laughs> <laughs> shoe miser, <laughs> shoe miser, shoe miser. We'll go with that. You know, and rightly so, man. You take care. I have had zero injuries since I have been uh, over there to Fleet Feet, and they've done done me right by my shoes. And I rotate well before things start to get too bald. Right. Uh, I have had no injuries. I am 40 years old, and I have put on a good amount of mileage and no no injuries because I'm, I'm being aware of paying attention as a shoe miser. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. Well. We, can, we can end on a, on a funny ha-ha. Okay, do it. So did you see the Nicki Minaj stuff? <sighs> no, I didn't. And I'm just going to say this right out of the gate. Do not like her at all. So if there was news about her, okay, it would have been. Do you know roughly what I'm going to talk about? No, I have no idea. Okay. But it would have been ignored completely. Okay. So on the 13th, okay, she tweeted this out, okay. like out of nowhere. All right. My cousin in Trinidad. I'm, this is a direct quote. <laughs> Ready? This is the tweet. Okay. My cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it. And became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. <laughs> okay. So my cousin N- Nikki Minaj uh-huh. and her millions of followers were opted into a story about vaccine awareness from her perspective based off of her cousin's friend in Trinidad. Her cousin's friend. Yes. Not even her cousin. No. Her cousin's friend in Trinidad. I'm just going to say this. Who... Anytime you start a story with yeah. my cousin's friend, come on now, it's probably sus. It's highly <laughs> sus. <laughs> Cousin's friend in Trinidad. You know, my cousin's friend yeah. sucked the chrome yeah. off of a trailer. Yeah, hitch. I have seen my aunt's <laughs> niece's brother-in-law yeah. completely remove a tail hitch with only his anus. Right. And yeah, <laughs> seriously, I I don't okay. doubt it for a second. Okay. Well, hold on. My my little brother told me that he won't get the vaccine because. He had a friend that got Bell's palsy from it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> Sorry, it's just so fucking dumb. <laughs> God damn it. You can't, so, so. Okay. So. This, this the, the cousin's friend had the vaccine. Yeah. Is now impotent and has swole balls. But he doesn't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he doesn't have a wife anymore or a fiance anymore either. And so that is her justification that you should be sus about the vaccine. Because it might swole your balls. So it cost you your fiance and you have, you'll be impotent. And this went, this went apeshit. 
And when I saw this, I like heavy eye rolled. Like, okay. I can't believe this is a thing. Right. And Twitter wouldn't do anything about it because technically it was an anecdote. It wasn't misinformation. <laughs> okay. But right off the bat, people started <laughs> dunking on her because it's obvious. It's like, honey, you're cousin's friend was raw dog and fucking around on his fiance and got the clap yeah and his balls are swole and it probably hurts to get up he you know what's he gonna say yeah, yeah. it's not it cost him his marriage I, yeah. like come on this isn't yeah and plus there's zero evidence that the vaccines of which it's not mentioned which one he got causes impotence or swole balls. Right. And if there was, there are probably a lot of dudes per, of a particular political faction that would love to have balls of any size <laughs> that may be like, hey, fuck, I'm going to get this. Yeah. So it's, come on, come well, on. And so n no one would do anything. Oh, my God, it was a train wreck. And it got so far down the rabbit hole that the there was a press release from, and here it is, breaking... Oh, Due no. to Nicki Minaj, the Trinidad and Tobago health minister, Dr. <laughs> Terrence, uh, and I'm going to butcher his last name, so I'm not going to say it, but this was the actual person in charge of uh, the health minister of the Trin vaccine effort. Right. <laughs> Responds to false swollen testicle claim made by the entertainer. He says there's no such reported case in Trinidad and Tobago. And so I, I watched the press release. So this is like the oh WHO thing that they do every day, like the daily press briefing that they do. The guy is sitting there in a mask. <laughs> and, and he's he, forced to talk about and he is forced, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. <laughs> yes. Like, and he, he, he's, he's basically saying, <laughs> we spent all day trying to trace down anyone that was reporting swollen balls. <laughs> <laughs> and couldn't find it. We called all 60 people. Yeah. And no one had no one swole has, balls. No one has swole balls. <laughs> and you could see only in eyes because the guy <laughs> is wearing a mask. He's wearing a mask. The exasperation uh, and futility that, that this doctor who's in charge of trying to get people vaccinated and keep relevant information and fighting disinformation. Right. They had to spend a whole day, one, trying to find an actual case where this existed, two, fighting the rumors because someone who has clearly more followers than the Trinidad and Tobago health minister, you know, dude, really? Is this serious? Like, Nicki Minaj is cousin's friend's, you know, swole balls and impotence? Like, I don't want that kind of... Come on. Yeah. And he's like, we have to... We, we're trying to do... Real work here. Yeah. And this is not helping. Well, I mean, how many people have been vaccinated in the United uh, States? Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. The percent of U.S. population that's fully vaccinated, 54.6%. And, and number of people yeah. that that translates to is 179 million. So do you think out of 179 million people? If roughly 50%, we'll just say 50% of that are guys. With testicles. Yeah. How many of those have ever reported <laughs> swole, swole balls. balls and impotence? If you if that was a thing, yeah. I guarantee you oh, we would hear about it, yeah. especially from a particular political faction. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're seeing these numbers, 179 million you in the US have been fully vaccinated. That's not I'm not even counting the people that have just gotten on board with their first shot. If you are still concerned that the vaccine may cause you impotence and swollen balls, contact your primary health care physician, not Nicki Minaj, because that's, the, come on. The only reason why you're contacting Nicki Minaj is if you're her cousin's friend. Right. So. And he ended up, I think the cousin ended up seeing how blown up it was, because it went sideways really fast. Yeah. And he's like, uh, you need to DM him. Because this was supposed to be private. So it's like sideways really fast. Yeah. It, it's just, if you are still concerned about the drawbacks or, or uh, side effects of the vaccine, you are absolutely 
you are absolutely in the right to question him. But do so with someone mm. capable of getting you science-based answers. Please do okay. that. Okay. Now, sp- speaking of that, I know we're running long. Yeah. Uh, saw an interesting thing from a Twitch guy okay. where, where he had... Um, he took like a call from an one of his followers' dads who was anti-vax, mm-hmm. and just talked to him and kind of they talked about the guy asked questions and he yeah. and he answered questions about the vaccine and the way it worked and the guy was like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, it was uh, uh, a fascinating crap. Uh, watch. We'll, we'll run really long, but so I. Uh, in addition to that, I was just tell- talking to this with Kim. Kim, I ran. Um, it was a tweet thread by Andy Slavitt. Um, he's like a pan- he was a pandemic guy, uh, in the Obama administration, and he was brought on as a consultant here after the n- new administration bid took place. And he added, I think, through the chunk of 2020, he was a consultant for for COVID nineteen. He was brought on. With Biden, not through Trump. Um, he had a, a tweet, thre- a very interesting tweet thread about a Midwest company with about six thousand employees. He said, which he kept anonymous, and the the company had set in mandated vaccines by X date. And if if you didn't have the vaccine, you were someone that they were going to then you know displace you. You were done. Like the the employment rules will be set that you need to have a max vaccine. And they took surveys along the way, and I'm summarizing it, but if you're looking for it, I would recommend just looking it up. But it was that there was a chunk of the employee base that hadn't gotten it yet, were apprehensive about it, or just flat out were against it entirely. And as they got closer to the dates, they kept doing the surveys. And what they did was the people that were saying no for various reasons – they started having one-on-one conversations, like pulling them outside of group situations and like essentially like you were talking about. It was, tell me, what are your concerns? Like, what are you worried about? And a lot of them, the conversation was very like, well, I, I don't know what's in it and that concerns me or uh, I'm under the impression that if everyone around me gets it, that I don't need to. And when you had these one-on-one conversations that were informative, not inflammatory, right. and science-based, they moved the needle of the percentage base that had no intention of getting it or were misinformed. They, they, they got a number of those people to then get the vaccine. And they were left with about roughly 300 people of the, the 6,000 or 8,000 that were flat-out no's. That will that will be terminated, but the owner was basically like, "You know the deal. Th- these are the rules. I've been very upfront about it. If I can't change your mind and I can't get you informed enough that you think it's worthwhile, then you are free to make that choice. But you will also be choosing another form of employment. And I thank you for your time, kind of thing. Yeah. So they, they said they will lose about three hundred employees. But there's interest, in, like your, to your point, there's an interesting amount of traction to be made, I think, when you try and have an educated conversation with the people who are no or are on the fence with misinformation, and you can approach it not with trying to dunk on them, right. <clears throat> but with a, a, a compassionate conversation with facts and listening to their concerns and not having a, necessarily not having a debate, but Tell me what you know. A question answer session, right, and yeah. I'll and I'll help you find answers, and and they'll be tr- as best as I can get you. They'll be trustworthy answers. You don't have to listen to me. I'm gonna try and pull in. So that's why I recommend if you're someone that's on the fence, or you're only getting your information, email us from a media outlet. Yeah, don't fuck. <laughs> Unless you want my bathwater. I heard that stops COVID. Uh, contact. Uh, your general physician, go to your doctor, uh, not Facebook, not, not CNN, not CNBC, not Fox News. Go to your doctor and get a, a, a conversation started there. Definitely you want to – the first choice is OANN. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Or Newsmax. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Please, God, no. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. And on that note. Don't forget to uh, get the shot. Return the cart. Wash your ass. Wash your face. <laughs> Do the kindness. Yeah. <laughs> Wash your... We got them all. Did we? Yeah. Wash your face. Wash your ass. Do the kindness. Brush your teeth. Shave your balls once in a while. Try Wash that. your hands. Try that one. Shave your... Yeah. Yeah. Polish return them the, up. Return the cart. Yeah. And, and do the kindness. And you, hopefully you voted in yesterday's California election. If not, um, make sure you're always registered to vote and participate in your civics. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. See you. Bye.